hey, and there goes YouTube. Cool. Get watch me work going here. And we're good to go. All right, hey everybody. Hope you guys had a good week last week. I took a little vacation, so I didn't stream at all. But uh, figured I would jump on tonight and just do like a quick little, uh, quick little stream just to see how everybody was doing. And uh, I may miss tomorrow night, but we'll be back this week and stream some more for sure. So uh, count on that. But hey, let's uh, let's jump in and see what we got going on here. This time you guys are seeing the strip in uh, in pencil form before I even get it. This is tomorrow's Legend of Bill, so just drawing. And still playing around with the uh, Genovation 24 key controller. So if you guys uh, if you guys have any questions about that, how it's going, how it works, uh, let me know because. I've been playing around with it more. I made some different icons and things for the buttons, and uh, it is pretty rocking so far. So I'm digging it. I think I'm probably just going to try to uh, get this strip penciled tonight, and then maybe we'll uh, catch back up next week, or night next week, tomorrow, and uh, hopefully during the day even, and uh, maybe start getting it inked, since you know it's got to be posted tomorrow. We know how that goes with old Legend of Bill. I do my best. But I love the I love the penciling stage. And as always, if you guys come up with any questions or anything, just let me know. Um, and I will be glad to answer anything and everything. I do end up having to uh, check a lot of different places, so. We always jump back and forth. All right, back to it. straighten all this out. One thing I am going to have to do though is normally normally I have a thing about not zooming in too far but especially for pencils but we're going to have to get in here and get a little more detailed on Frank. So last Monday uh, Legend of Bill had a Labor Day strip because it was Labor Day and if you're not watching from the US uh, U.S. holiday, the U.S. of A. So um, there was a there was a holiday themed strip for Legend of Bill. So we took a little break from the story, which I like to do every now and again for the holidays. Um, but now that we're back, gotta get back to the story. And the last time we had a story strip, Frank was in there. Frank is the little blue dragon from Legend of Bill. Uh, I don't want to call him a sidekick, but 
I feel like I feel like Bill is more the sidekick to Frank sometimes. Kind of like a kind of like Arthur and the Tick. If anybody's a Tick fan, which I happen to be. And Frank has these super complicated ear pieces. super difficult to get right. So that's why I, whoops. See I'm getting better with his keys. I'm not having to look at him that much. Trying to do some stuff compositionally with the door here to, you know, frame things a little bit anyway. I'm sure I'm going to have to straighten it up though, since I'm like freehanding the, the straights here. I've said it before. I, I need to sketch hair. I need to do a lot of sketching of hairstyles. I feel like that is a super, super, super weakness. Not that there aren't plenty of other weaknesses, but hair is definitely one, one of my kryptonites. <laughs> Not so sure about the proportions on the face either here, but we'll we'll handle that when uh, when we start inking for sure. All right, let's get back out. She's looking she's looking kind of zombie princess Gina, dark queen ish esque. see how that goes. Check everybody out. Body's all good. We'll hang out in Twitch a little while. Hey Twitch. All my Twitch friends. All right, so I gotta go and look at my notes and see uh, what we're talking about here. King consoles her. Let's see, how are we gonna do this? Hmm. So she's actually f turning around pretty quick here, uh, which hopefully we'll read when I get those motion lines in there. Whoop, turn it around. Oh yeah, save. Um, and here I want her dad to sort of console her a little bit. So I think what I want to do is, let's get to the selection, let's start with the same sketch as a basis, and we'll do what's called an animation, a shift and trace. Oh, see, there's copy paste, boom, let's do that, and then her 
over here, but I want her in this other third, and then we're going to do that. Because what we're doing is effectively pulling the camera back in this next panel. Let's go with that. We may want to do some more, but let's see what we end up with. Yeah. And I actually think it needs to move a little bit further. And again, guys, this is the beauty, the beauty of digital. Except I want to transform a little bit different here. We're going to do a free transform on this. Do you know what I think I want to do? I think I want to change the perspective just a bit. And let's see if I can do that and preserve volume. That'll be, <laughs> that's going to be the trick. And like I say, it doesn't have to be exactly right in this frame because I can always uh, let's just try it like that and see see what's up we'll go back to sketch Let's see. I always like to think of these things from the last strip to this strip as kind of like a storyboard for a film or think of it in, in the sense of camera. And it doesn't always work, but it can work sometimes. So I like to kind of try and keep my thirds sort of set up, although this is pretty high up, you know, but it's all right. Um, at least compositionally, we're kind of in the, that square with our thirds. In this panel I'm just not... I want to show Gina and the Princess and I want to show her dad but it's kind of a tougher 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 thing to do. Like I don't know exactly how I want his reaction to be. Like I'd love for him to have his hand here in some way shape or form how would that work if that was this hand yeah that'd be like that are just getting crazier and crazier. Start turning the edges down a little bit here. Maybe we can get a better phoneme for his his mouth. See, I want to think of his mouth like the rest of the characters, you know? And then, of course, the beard needs to stretch under that.
figure that out. I think the scale's killing me here too. I think I drew his head uh, slightly too big for where she is. This is kind of cool because normally I, um, you know, I stream when I'm inking and stuff like that. So you guys are getting to see, you guys are getting to see all the, all the dirtiness here, all the working out of the ideas and actually where things go. This is the, this is the hard part and the fun part. Oh, hey, Kate. Kate from Twitch. Hey, welcome to the channel. Grab a grab a follow, um, and if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. Oh, I appreciate the the kind words. Yeah, so this is the uh, the pencil stage for my web comic. I do two uh, two web comics a week, both at legendabill.com. Um, so yeah, check them out. You're seeing uh, Frank the Dragon over here, and then uh, Princess Gina slash the Dark Queen. She's sort of uh, uh, in, a, in a little conundrum right now. Those two characters are. So, uh, Legend of Bill is a serial strip, so you have to kind of start at the beginning and then read up to the point. But, um, yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're having fun. So, welcome to the channel. Uh, and if you, I don't know if you read or not, but if you have any questions about comics, cartoons, what I'm using, all that stuff, please feel free to ask. Um, uh, I've done a, done a lot, I've been in feature animation for a long time, so yeah, just uh, shoot. Oh yeah. Yeah, keeping, keeping characters on model is tough, absolutely tough. Um, and I actually, <laughs> I just talked about shift and trace, which was one of the tricks that we always used to use. How do you get into so uh, it's in drawing them? So uh, that's pretty easy. So for everybody on all the other streaming services, Kate on Twitch is asking, "How do you get into web comics?" Um, that's super easy. You just do it. Honestly, um, there are so many places to publish web comics now online. If you don't have your own website, like get a Tumblr, Facebook, anything where where you know social media, uh, you know people hang out and uh, uh, just start drawing. Um, I was lucky enough to do a guest strip for David Reddick at Legend of Bill, God, I guess it was late 2010 or 2011, and um, uh, just started from there. And uh, hopefully, I like to think I've been getting better at it. I mean, I did a lot of drawing, obviously, but Man, I, if you if you check out my very first Gnome Syndicate strips, which is the comic that I do on Thursdays, ugh, it's really bad. I mean, I'm definitely not the best artist in the world by any any stretch of the imagination. But uh, man, it was it was even worse back then. But I guess you just have to kind of just jump in, just dive in. It's one of those things. It's like uh, just just dive in the deep end. <laughs> I see you. You mentioned, uh, you mentioned oil painting, right? Stick to oil painting. Uh, oil painting is what I want to learn how to do. I uh, I never, I always wanted to be, uh, always wanted to be a painter, illustrator in college and everything, and just never quite connected. That's what I want to learn how to do is oil paint. So you got me. You got me there. Yeah, it's and and I still, 
I still don't uh, make web comics full time. I have a. I used to work in feature animation um, and did like Shrek, Madagascar, all those movies, How to Train Your Dragon, and uh, now I've moved over to video games, and that's kind of my day job is still making video games, but. Uh, a lot of a lot of my passion is around you know traditional art and traditional media and uh, making these comics. I just love cartooning. I always have. Yeah, I feel the same way about comics as you were just saying about oil painting. It, it to me it would be a fun job, and I kind of wish I could support myself doing it. But um, I, I always have this fear that if I could support myself doing it, that it would stop being fun. <laughs> so I kind of, it's, it's, a, it's a scary subject. I, I appreciate that, but I, I wouldn't go Renaissance, man. That's a <laughs> that, very, very kind, kind words, but uh, um, yes, but uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been great. Uh, just being able to to get into cartooning and uh, I love it. And yeah, so yeah, check out the comics. I mean, I don't know. It all depends on what you like. Uh, Legend of Bill is sort of a fantasy based uh, comic strip. I, and the one I do the other strip on there too, the Gnome Syndicate. And then there's a third artist that does a strip called Bar Winch Tales. But um, yeah, Legend of Bill and Gnome Syndicate are both sort of. Uh, fantasy serial strips so it's much more like um, the Phantom or Dick Tracy where you kind of want to tune in each week and find out what happens next as opposed to like a Garfield where it's a gag every week and you can you, you show up for the joke and then that was great so yeah I like to I like to kind of leave some cliffhangers and set some things up but it's kind of uh, it's a little bit more difficult to grow an audience that way in web comics because you really need to um, sort of hook those people and get them coming back but you know if you just tune in for one week and see something you're gonna be like I don't get it so yeah I mean I serial comic strips I, I always loved the uh, the Phantom growing up I would always you know want to read that um, but I love the gag days too man but I, I tell you coming from my film background kind of makes it a little bit easier for me to do serial strips versus like gag a day. Gag a day strips are hard to write. Um, I have so much respect for the guys that do the the gag a day strips, and not necessarily political strips, but like you know, and are legitimately funny. You mentioned Calvin and Hobbes, yeah, awesome. And yeah, the stuff I'm doing right now is just is super, super rough pencils. Um, and I'll be coming back uh, probably probably tomorrow at some point and uh, and you know doing some inks. So and actually getting my getting my dialogue sort of finalized and and everything like that while I make tangents with the hair. See if I can miss the crown. I'll, I'll overlap her some, but miss the crown. I think we'll do it that way. Yes, yeah, gag a day. That's I have. I tried it, you know, occasionally. But I mean, even I, even me doing the serial strips. Uh, I do Legend of Bill once a week, and I do uh, Gnome Syndicate once a week. If I had to do one of those strips five days a week or seven days a week, like, you know, Peanuts, or something like that, holy moly. Like, that's the, the uh, much respect for those guys. Much respect. <laughs> Let me flip over and check my other channels streaming here. 
I'm also streaming on uh, YouTube, Watch Me Work, and uh, Picardo. So, I always want to make sure if there's questions over there. But we're back. sure I save. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Kate was saying that her boyfriend was into comics, but uh, comic books, but I, I never grew out of comic books. I'm a, I'm a huge nerd. <laughs> so you can even, you can even see in my stream that I've still got some Marvel stuff up in the corner there and got Star Wars right over here got uh, Star Wars tattoos so you know <laughs> nerds forever oh no I love I, I love serial comics serial comic strips uh, especially I mean I think there's I think there's plenty to sort of carry a story over time um, and it's it's you know it's not that you you every day or every week you have to deal with that story. I mean, you can sort of go off on a little tangent here or there, right? Just like episodic TV or, you know, I mean, think about any any sitcoms from recent decades, like um, well, Seinfeld's a bad example, but like Friends, you know. I mean, there are certain there are certain threads, narrative threads that run through there based on relationships and everything else, but it's still an ensemble cast, so you can have a a Joey episode or a Chandler episode or a Ross and Rachel episode and so serial strips kind of work like that it's more like a, a TV sitcom you know uh, where you can have a gag a day if you want you know and I've done that before uh, like I was saying earlier doing holiday strips like for Labor Day here in the US and stuff like that but uh, ultimately you know behind the scenes you're kind of pushing the story along Let's see here. Make sure we get our signature rocks in here. Our rock wall. final panel this is going to be interesting this is going to be a little bit of a cut um, and a cut away and I'm gonna have to pull up some reference for this one I haven't drawn this character in quite a while so uh, let's see here you guys will see me staring at my other monitor here for just a little bit hang tight I'm going to pull up the uh, some reference for the main villain for uh, Legend of Bill. Dun dun dun. Let's see what we can do here. This is the the bad guy. There we go. Let's see. 
Oh yeah. There we go. All right. And we're back. Oh, hey, thanks for the kind words, Kate. Yeah, uh, um, I, I I had one other person. I was doing this event with uh, with Adobe in San Francisco, and I was Twitch streaming, and that's how I kind of found Twitch. Um, and uh, somebody on that stream, I was doing a strip live, kind of like I do all the time. And uh, somebody on that stream mentioned that the the way I ink looked a little bit like Asterix, and I about fell out of the chair because it's like, what? That's awesome. Yeah, thank thank you very much. I mean, that's like the a crazy high compliment because I, I absolutely love Asterix. Um, I didn't intentionally go down that road, you know, but the fact that, that, you know, two people now have said that, it's like, oh, okay, thank you <laughs> so much. That's really awesome. So, yeah, I appreciate it. Check my others right quick. And back. All right, let me get this reference going here and see what we can do with Mr. Warwick's. It's funny because what I'm doing here is I'm cutting not only sort of in time but to like another dimension for this third panel where our villain is. It's like a different location, different time and space and um, uh, normally you know, like a lot of times you would see that they would come up here and say like, you know, meanwhile, and they'd have like a different box kind of thing. And uh, I remember watching the uh, documentary with uh, Jeff Smith, who did Bone, which is one of my all time favorite, 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 favorite graphic novels. And um, uh, he was saying that he wanted to do something at the time uh, when when he was doing bone where he could cut more sort of cinematically and not and I'm paraphrasing by all means so um, Where he could cut sort of more cinematically and not uh, Be worried about putting you know meanwhile or two days from now or anything like that and just sort of let the entire narrative fit um, And I'm kind of doing that uh, it's a little bit tougher because it's three panels and I have those restrictions, but for the most part, uh, I do it anyway. Because why not? Why not? Right? Let's see if we can get some style points in here. I know I want I know I want this little line of dialogue to be right here. Yeah, that's not too much. Because I definitely want the front of the face. To be more like that. It's been a while since I've drawn this guy. Got a little crazy there.
I always seem to end up in this situation where I like put in a speech balloon or whatever and I'm drawing I'm drawing an elf character or some character that has like elf ears you know like you do and um, the ears always end up being tangent to something always and it drives me crazy I mean I know I know I'm guilty of it but if there's one thing I just can't stand it's tangents in art and I'm super guilty of it don't get me wrong don't get me wrong but blah, drives me crazy You know what I'm going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's not, let's not reinvent the wheel here. Be about right there. I know you're going to, you're going to think this is crazy. Like, why would you even bother doing that? But. Because it gives me something to kinds of effects and stuff here. The thing that worries me kind of cinematically about this though is that I like that better. Um, I'm wanting him to have some dialogue right here. kind of bothers me that the head that the mouth is going to be covered up by that but I like the head turn idea oh hey Kate yeah well have a good night thanks for uh, dropping by and hanging out and uh, hey come back anytime um, I usually I try to stream definitely on Monday nights. I'm going to be missing tomorrow night, unfortunately, but um, yeah, I try to stream at least once or twice a week. Uh, I'd love to do it more. So yeah, come back, hang out, ask more questions. I feel a little better about this because at least I get to see the whole mouth, which is uh, 
I just feel like it's important. Since he's since he's delivering dialogue. Not so about that either. Relationship I'm digging. You gotta rather sort of come down there. I don't want to get too too jokery here with this, but there'll be there'll be magic. Oh yeah, then we gotta draw the tats. He's got tats. Let's get crazy and draw tats in purple. That's also save. And while that's saving, I'll check my chats. All good. All right, let's get back to it. Back at it. my reference. There we go. Okay. Let's flip back over the red for just a second. We get some some of those kind of details in there. Alright, now we're flipping the purple. We'll do a new uh, I'm gonna do a new layer and get some tats in here. I think the big one even if these get colored in solid that's totally cool Totes cool, totes cool. Man, big, big props to uh, David Reddick for designing this because these tattoos are insane. When I ink them, I'm going to have to leave them fat enough to get filled in, which is pretty crazy. I mean, he's even got one on the nose, man. Awesome.
pretty cool. Oh yeah. Here. Let's do this one first. This is going to be awesome because it gives it that contour. Like so. He's got some others on the other cheek too. far out of the way because I don't want to change it up the nose like I was just saying earlier. We can do kind of some stuff with it. Let's see if I can find another shot of these tats. have some Do some draw through there to see what we're talking about and subsequently erase everything. I'm going to give him a little more space to get this get his one line of dialogue out which I think will fit right there perfectly The one thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to switch back to the blue, which is kind of arbitrary color wise. Did I do an eyedropper? I don't think I did. I think Alt would do it though. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is switch back here and he was outside previously
had some wicked clouds in his land. So I want to make sure that I set up the fact that he's in a different place altogether. Uh, just so that that reads a little bit better. People that follow the strip will know, but anybody who just comes upon it's going to be like, what? Which I know is a bad thing, but, you know, what you going to do? Let's take a let's take a little looky loo here. <clears throat> that should continue pretty well from the last one. To clean up some of the stuff there, but hey, I think we got a penciled strip. That's what I think. It's not Monday yet, so how cool is that? All right, so guys and gals, join me tomorrow, and uh, we'll get this inking done, and get the strip posted, and you guys will see the the creation live. Um, watch for watch for Twitter, watch for uh, your your Twitch follows. Throw me a throw me a follow on any of the channels that I'm streaming on. Uh, uh, YouTube. At Kev Draws, K E V D R A W S. Uh, watch me work as KM Vassy and uh, KM Vassy on Twitch. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out, and uh, hopefully, I'll see you tomorrow and we can keep working on this. Have a good night. Bye.